unintentional overdoses in our community. We have a person in Hamilton dying every other day. I'm going to say that again. Every other day someone dies of an unintentional overdose in our community. That is not just to heroin. It's not just to opiates even. Uh, usually it's to a combination of drugs. Um, usually opiates combined with alcohol, uh, benzodiazepines, things like that that, that get, uh, are problematic. There is a drug out there called Narcan. It was mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, has been used in emergency medicine for mm, 40 years, I'd bet, I'd say, since the 70s. Um, and now is um, where the legislature here passed a law uh, that we can make it available to more emergency responders or first responders, including family and friends. Um, we have been prescribing it here in Hamilton County to, uh, we've done a pilot project through the Center for Chemical Addictions Treatment, otherwise known as the Cat House. Um, and we've been prescribing through their treatment program to opiate addicts uh, for the past year. We have prescribed, um, they've I think done 300 prescriptions at this point, and they've had six saves. That means six times people have used their kits and saved either, the, they've either been saved themselves or they've saved someone else's life. We know that when the highest time for overdose is right when people have, have get out of either prison or jail or come out of a treatment plan, a treatment program because they, for whatever reason, go back to using and use the same amount that they did before they went in and it's it's a lethal dose now. So we know that. They became tolerant. They became tolerant and then and now they're tolerant. Their tolerance. They've lost their tolerance and they lose their tolerance within a two to four week period and they go back down. So we thought that starting for something like that with um, our addictions, with an addictions treatment unit was a good thing. And we have seen that they have worked very well and very hard to do this. It, at first, the clients were like, well, I, I'm supposed to not use anymore. And we said, yes, exactly. You're supposed to not use anymore. But our experience is that some of you will go back to using. Some of you may use again. And so we want to help you. We can treat you again. We can help you get into recovery again only if you're alive. Once you're dead, we can't help with that. So we're going to help you get naloxone and have that available. And we also know that you know some of your old, you know, the old people places and things, some of those old people that you used to hang with, we know you're still going to see some of them. We know that they're your family and you're not going to abandon your family. And you may need this for, for them. So, yes. So they have to get a prescription to get this. And um, that's the only way they can get it is come in, ask for a prescription from a medical care provider? Yeah, that's, that's one way. I mean, if they are found overdosed by uh, Right, they'll someone, give it to them. They'll a, get it. But to, to have it available, you have to have a prescription written to you um, <coughs> by a medical professional. And there's been 300, you said? Uh, there were 300 prescriptions that were written this year from CCAT. Oh, just um, from that organization. Just from that organization. Oh, okay. Just from that organization. And that's a drop in the bucket mm -hmm. for what we know. We also have another project here in Hamilton County called uh, that is funded by the Ohio Department of Health. And it's Project Dawn. Project Dawn was started in um, uh, Portsmouth, Ohio. And it is available <laughs> to anyone. They, they run it out of their health department. UC Hospital got the Project Dawn grant. Uh, Dr. Judith Feinberg is the person who got that grant, and she has been working to uh, deliver naloxone to people who come in who are current users through the Cincinnati Exchange Program, which is, you don't know those the, that name, it is sometimes known as the Needle Exchange uh, van. 
um, and I can talk a little bit about that and tell you why that's an important program for us to get started here in our community. So let me look at some of the, the questions that you all asked and, and sort of start with why now? Why is heroin a big deal now? It is a big deal now because um, in the 90s uh, and early 2000s, uh, prescription painkillers became uh, drugs that were prescribed to a lot of people. So there were sort of lots of them hanging around um, for people. Over time, people began Prescribers began to abuse that system um, in, in various places, um, and I would say those were not ethical prescribers. And so in places like Scioto, Adams, Pike County, uh, Ohio, and the northeastern part of uh, Kentucky, um, there were prescribers who were, all you had to do was walk in with your money, they would write you a prescription and you could walk to the next table over and get the drugs that you were prescribed and walk out the door. And people were getting them for all kinds of reasons, um, but mostly because they wanted to feel the high that those prescription drugs gave them. Now. So many of the people that I talk to who are current addicts um, started in two ways. They started in one of two ways. One way was they were they were prescribed, legally prescribed a prescription for a narcotic, uh, hydrocodone, oxycodone, uh, oxycontin, Percocet, by a prescriber because they had had an injury, uh, a dental procedure that was pain, that might be painful to them, some kind of surgery, um, and they were legally prescribed that. They took the drug and they thought, this is wonderful. I love this feeling. This is the greatest thing. Um, I hear alcoholics talk about that same kind of feeling when they have their first drink. And it's the same kind of thing. It fit a spot that was empty in their brain chemistry for whatever reason. Um, so these, these folks started because they were legally prescribed. They took the legal prescriptions for as long as they could get them. When they couldn't get them anymore, they turn to illegal ways of getting the prescriptions. When pres um, particular laws were passed that were really well intentioned to clamp down on the over prescription of these drugs, really good, well intended laws, what happened was nobody was told or taught how to get people so that they didn't turn to the illegal substances when they cut off their prescriptions. And so people couldn't get the, the drugs anymore, the prescription drugs or the pill form drugs, so they turned to what was A, less expensive, and quote, according to addicts, a better high. And that was heroin. So they turned to that, to that drug because it is less expensive. Yes, sir? I'm leaving one part out. Uh -huh. that part of the reason that they were prescribed these is because they had pain. Yes. And they work, they relieve the pain. Oh, That's not quite the same mechanism of wanting to get a high that you're sort of describing. Yes, but they were originally prescribed because they wanted to make sure that they didn't have pain. And there are truly people out there who need these drugs on a regular basis because they solve a chronic pain problem. And I do not want to discount those folks at all. But if we're talking about the epidemic that we're having, that epidemic is related to people moving because they're seeking to not get sick because they're detoxing. They would be detoxing and they would get sick from detoxing. And the sickness that people feel when they're detoxing is like the worst case of flu you've ever had. 
So it's, it's really, really bad. Shakes, fever, nausea, everything that you can think of that goes with a really bad case of the flu. Uh, people who have chronic pain need to work with their physician to make sure that they're doing all of the things, both prescription pills, medicine, and prescription non-medical ways to, to handle their pain. Um, that they can do. So all of those things, so that started in, and people turned to heroin. The other group of people started using either prescription drugs Ill, illegally uh, by stealing them out of their parents' medicine cabinet or uh, getting them from a friend uh, or they started right with heroin because it's the risky thing to do. Some of us in this room came up in the 60s. You know, we were we were we were around in the 60s. We were doing things in the 60s, and there were risky things out there that we tried for a variety of reasons. We, you know, it was the hip thing to do. It was uh, play out that that looks like fun. They're having a good time. I want to go try that. Um, and that's what some folks do today as well. They try something that's risky. And right now, heroin is that thing that most people are trying. Uh, not a good thing, but it is, it is what happens. And then once they've tried it, if it fits that spot in their brain and helps them to feel good and feel better and they like it, you know, some people try it and they hate it. They don't ever try it again. <laughs> um, some people try it and and end up going down the road and being hooked. Yes. Or 